Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about pre-Columbian America and where did the first Americans come from, right? So lately there's been a lot of controversy on pre-Columbian America basically because people like to talk about whether the pre-Columbian Americans were better off or worse off uh, when, you know, Columbus and the Europeans uh, landed here in America in 1492. So today I want to offer a little bit of nuanced explanation on who the first Americans were and, you know, how did pre-Columbian America look like, right? So let's get started. So how did America look like? This is a very difficult question because the reality is that America is extremely big and there's different parts that are going to look a certain way and other parts are going to look at another way. The people are going to have some culture, some are going to be very poor, some of them are going to be very rich. So it's, it's very, very varied, right? So when most people think of pre-Columbian Americans, they usually think about the Mexica, the, the Aztec, or the Mayans, right? Or for example, also the Inca. Okay, so those are very extraordinary and fascinating cultures. You know, for example, the Mexica and the Mayan with those very impressive pyramids. And it's not just the pyramids, right? It's the agriculture, it's the uh, architecture, engineering, irrigation, systems of government, writing systems, trading, forming alliances, you know, they have schools, you know, they're very sophisticated, very advanced civilizations for their times, particularly considering that they do not have the same resources that the old world has, right? So what I mean by this is that they don't have the wheels, right? They don't have horses, they don't have metals, they don't have gunpowder, right? They don't have firearms, okay? So without these tools, they're able to create magnanimous, you know, structures, right? Like those pyramids. And, and again, it's not just the pyramids, the cities themselves, you know, for example, the, the Mexica have Tenochtitlan, right? A floating city on top of a lake, right? So those feats are pretty impressive. They are something that really fascinate the Spanish. You know, they have never seen anything like this before. So I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking, well, the Mexica were very advanced for their time. The Inca were very advanced for, the, for their time. Uh, that is not representative of the entire continent of America, right? In reality, the Mexica and the Incas are kind of exceptions to the rule for achieving that level of, you know, advancement, it's really incredible. I think it speaks volume to their ingenuity, to, you know, the, 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 the resilience of the American people. Uh, at the same time, this is one of the reasons why the Spanish kind of sort of saw them as a little less developed, right? Because they don't have this technological advancement that they do have in Europe. However, at the same time, you need to put into context that they're, they're able to achieve a lot of things without those technologies, right? But for the most part, the Mexica and the Inca are exceptions to the rule in America. Most of America were kind of sort of coming out of the Stone Age, right? And what I mean by this is that they relied a lot on stone, right? Uh, most of the rest of America, there's, you know, thriving civilizations that they don't have a lot of technology. But at the same time, they don't have a very organized system of government. They don't have a lot of technology. And I'm basing all of this on the accounts of Christopher Columbus, eventually Hernán Cortés and his whole expedition. They write several accounts of it, you know, through Bernardino de Sagún, through Hernán Díaz del El Castillo. And then eventually when the explorers make their way over here in mainland America, you have, you know, uh, uh, Alvar Núñez Cabeza de Vaca, you know, you have several people who talk about what they're encountering here in the Americas, and none of them mention any form of advanced civilization, at least not anything that, that resembles the Mexica. They do have some societies that have, you know, some sort of alliances between them, that they have trade networks, that they have watering systems, that they have different cultures, that they have different religions. So in that sense, they are very advanced. However, None of them are a military power. None of them are an, an advanced civilization. They are mostly coming out of the Stone Age. And all of this is going to place them at a disadvantage against the Spanish when things turn ugly. All right. So I always found the metaphor of the new world and the old world was very appropriate 
because for the most part, this applies on many different levels, right? And in many different layers, okay? Because if you really think about it, for the old world, which is Europe, Africa, Asia, uh, America is quite literally a new world, right? What they're finding in America are things beyond their imagination, right? You know, land like they've never seen before, people that have customs, traditions, religions that they've never seen before. So it's quite literally a new world, right? And for the Americans, looking at the Europeans, you know, they really do look like people from other world, right? Think about it like this. Americans look a very particular way, right? And I mean, you know, skin tone, I mean, eye color, I mean, color of hair, I mean, height, I mean, you know, everything. Most of Americans look very similar. They have, they have different traditions, they have different cultures, they have different ways of living, but they all look very similar, right? Uh, Europeans think, think about it. They're a little bit taller. They have different eye color. They have different hair color. They are wearing armors. They have technology like, you know, gunpowder, like firearms, like, you know, swords that they've never seen before, right? So for them, it is quite literally also like seeing people from, from another world, right? So this metaphor of the new world and the old world, it's very, very appropriate, right? And you need to understand that when you see two very different cultures, right, with traditions, expectations, language, religion, everything, it's going to be chaotic, right? It is impossible to expect this to be, you know, friendly, right? Initially, it's going to be friendly because both of them don't know what to expect of each other exactly. But as time goes by, it's going to be increasingly chaotic, right? Especially because there's going to be conflicts with, for example, religion, and there's going to be conflicts with land, right? So those two are going to be the main sources of problems, right? Because Americans and Europeans have different interpretations of land, of property, and religion, right? They have very, very different religions, and these are going to be two very significant sources of uh, conflicts between them. And I think what is going to highlight the tension between the Spanish and the Indians is the first settlement that Columbus left. It was called La Navidad, right? So he left a group of people there while he went back to Spain to show the king and queen what he found and all that. When they come back a few months later, that settlement was destroyed, right? The settlement of La Navidad, you know, just was destroyed by the Indians, right? So this highlights the tensions that were about to happen, right, between Indians and Spanish, right? Because again, there's a clash of cultures, right? And this is a very good example that very early on, you know, there's going to be difficulty in trying to settle in the Caribbean. And so I think one of the most interesting things coming out of this is to learn how fascinating the American cultures develop without the interference of the old world, right? So I think speaks volumes to the ingenuity of the Americans, right? To, to have been able to develop to the point of being, you know, so advanced in so many ways, you know, without so many resources, without the advantages that the old world had, right? Because the old world was connected and all of them could share their own resources, right? But America developed its own thing, right? So I think Americans should be very proud of what we became without the interference of the old world. And at the same time, we should acknowledge that we did benefit in some ways, you know, from the systems of government, from the technology, from many other things that, that the Europeans brought. And at the same time, it's okay to admit that the Spanish also brought some problems, right? Diseases, you know, the way the conversation was handled, it could have been handled in a very much different way, in a better way. But I think we shouldn't dwell on the past and, you know, foster this historical resentments as to, you know, the Europeans shouldn't have done this or the Americans should have done that. At the end of the day, I think we should, you know, be very proud again of what we became and what we continue to become, right? Because as much as we were our own thing before the old world connected with the new world, we continue to become our own thing, right? When we intermingle all of our resources, all of the people, everything between the old world and the new world, the Americans also became our own little thing, right? 
we became, you know, different, right? We became better from it, I think, right? So we should be very proud of who we are and we shouldn't be dwelling the past and be blaming people. And what we should do is basically move on, learn from it and understand and accept who we are and basically move forward from it, right? So this is what I have for y'all today. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Uh, I'll be around and be safe, okay? See y'all.